Liberty Baptist University. Well, I guess it's just Liberty now. Uh, that's where all of that's located. Uh, can't stress how much of an influence they have over the local area. Uh, every aspect, business, religion, politics, uh, it's just... Lynchburg is probably about the size of Springdale. It's like maybe 75,000 people, but it doesn't have any other thing else around it. But Thomas Road Baptist Church has 25,000 members there, so that's that's a lot of influence for one church to have. Uh, anyway, we uh, met her at a Hardy's in Lynchburg, and... Uh, we, uh, we started dating in August, and we got engaged in December, and we were married in April. Uh, actually, we wanted a longer engagement, but my brother was getting ready to be deployed overseas, so we went on and did it while he could get leave and get home. Actually, he was in Turkey for two years. Uh, we've got two daughters, one of whom is sitting here, and the other is is either at her church or be at one of the two, we, I'm not sure. Because uh, she doesn't get up till the last minute, kind of like her mom. Uh, we're always on time, thanks to her. And uh, before we get started, I can't say enough good things about Terry. Uh, she's a wonderful wife. She's, uh, all the blessings the Lord has given me, she's my favorite. And I don't think I would be here without her. And I can't stress the importance of even when she wasn't sure when she had her doubts, she always supported me and uh, gave me encouragement, as she has all my life. And I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I was raised Methodist, and Terry was raised Methodist and Baptist, uh, with a little bit of Catholic thrown in. Uh, she... Uh, I guess she was really Methodist, she was a Christian Methodist, mm -hmm. but she also went to a Catholic church with her aunt. Uh, basically, I went to the Methodist church, and, and I went through a period of where I just didn't go to church. Uh, I know that sounds bad, but when I was younger, I just felt like I didn't need or want God. It was nothing personal against God, it was just other things that I wanted to do which didn't fit in with how Christians should live so let's just leave it at that uh, so as I say we've been married 32 years uh, throughout our marriage we always and this is going to sound really bad but I started going back to church really when Jessica was born because I felt like if you know, maybe if I was kind of an agnostic, it's not fair to throw that on the child. So that's really what kind of started me going back to church. And, uh, you know, I wanted to her, you know, if I was like, well, you know, I may be a heathen and I may not be right, but it's not fair to her. And I wanted her to have it. And I think maybe it was something inside of me at that point that was even saying, you know, I think the Lord was even trying to draw me then. Below the course of years, we went to a Methodist church, uh, we went to a Baptist church, and we went to a non-denominational church when we came out here. Uh, and my faith actually grew, you know, during the course of this, even when I was having some you know, doubts, to be frank with you. But I think the Lord knew I was looking, and he just kind of never let go. I don't know any other way to put it. Uh, <clears throat> so, anyway, <clears throat> we were going to the non-denominational church in Solomon Springs, and I don't want to diss anybody or put anybody down. And if it comes across that, I don't mean it, because it's a lot of wonderful people that we've known through the years that were in the Protestant church. Uh, my folks are still Protestant. Uh, good Christian people. But I've gotten to the point 
let me back up, three or four years, what was it, four years ago? It must have been five now. I had a tumor cut out of my colon. And I don't know whether it was that or what, but I just said, you know, I'm missing something. I feel like something's missing. And I had already, <clears throat> Terry and I talked about it, I had, I had a growing dissatisfaction with the church we were attending. And like I say, it's nothing personal. For all I know, it was me, and I'll take the blame for it. But it was just something that it just, I said, this, this isn't right. I, I don't want to just go to church on a Sunday and say a few prayers and throw a check in the plate and say, hey, I got Jesus covered this week. I didn't want that. Uh, so, and I hesitate to tell this because I, well, y'all know me, I'm not right anyway. So anyway, it's, it's okay this year. Uh, a little voice, and I don't mean a literal voice, but a little voice told me, you need to start looking. So I said, okay, this was about three years ago. And uh, orthodoxy was not even on my radar. But so I started looking on that repository of knowledge, the internet. I didn't know where to start, so go ahead and laugh. I took an online quiz. Uh, well, I mean, it seemed like the thing to do at the time. But anyway, I took an online quiz, and it came back, well, I should be a Lutheran. Well, gee, that's Protestant, you know. So anyway, uh, I took an online quiz, and while I was on there, and I shouldn't tell this, but they had a bunch of quizzes that like, what religion should you be, you know, and I took one and I found out I've got a 97% chance of being inducted by aliens, which probably <laughs> <laughs> And also that I should probably apply to be in Mensa, which my wife informed me these quizzes probably not work. <laughs> uh, originally, when I started looking, the first thing that came to my mind, I wanted original Christianity and, and Church of Christ came to my mind but then there were some things I don't know <clears throat> but anyway so I said well you know I'm just going to look at this for a while and I, we had been attending church and then my work changed and I said you know what I know this probably isn't right to her, but I just kind of want to stop and look and just back away with a clear mind and look at these things so uh I started looking at all the denominations, and again, orthodoxy wasn't even on my list. Honestly, I was just looking at all the different Protestant denominations. Uh, but I slowly came to the realization that I was looking for the wrong thing. I was looking for a God of my own making versus the God who is. So... I was frustrated, I was hurt, because I wanted a closer communion with God, but I didn't know how to get there. So I finally did what I should have done to start with. I just said, God, send me where you want me to go. Uh, so anyway, with that, I started looking. And uh, the first thought that ran in my mind was, maybe I need to look at the Catholic Church. So I started investigating that and looking at it. And of course, Terry had been, some of her family's Catholic, so she clued me in on some of this stuff. I've never been to a Catholic church, honestly, but one time, and that was for a wedding. So, uh, yeah, honestly, back home, for 75,000 people, they have two Catholic churches. That's it. Presbyterians are considered exotic. I mean, we've got basically Baptists, Methodists, and that's pretty much it. But anyway, so I started looking at it, and I really can't remember exactly how the Orthodox website came up. But I went ahead and clicked it open, and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, well, this is pretty impressive. I like this. And then my next thought was, Orthodox, you got to be kidding me. I am not Russian because to me, and I don't want to offend anybody, but to me when I thought orthodoxy, I think of these long-haired priests swinging incense, speaking in Russian, you know. And I'm like, I'm not Russian, I'm American. 
But again, the little voice told me, dig a little deeper. So I said, okay, okay. So we did. So I studied at it. And up to this point, I hadn't said anything really to Terry about this. I mean, I think she was aware that I was unhappy and I was looking. And uh, so I, I started looking at, at writings and websites and also the, crit- the criticisms of orthodoxy as well. And two things stood out to me uh, that really rang true. One was not this instant salvation, but the I was saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved. That, I'm like, this is right. This is what what it's supposed to be. And another was not the church is like a court, but the church is a hospital. Because, and forgive me if this is wrong or for saying this, but I really wasn't as concerned about my own salvation as I was. I wanted to be made whole. I wanted to feel well. Uh, I didn't want to go to hell either. I mean, don't get me wrong on that. <laughs> you know, that, I, I was broken and I needed fixing. And that was, that was the driving force for me. So the next thing, uh, I needed to do was talk to Terry. And of course, she's easy to talk to. And I've actually got her up here today because she's pretty. And if I get born or stumble, you've got a distraction there. So, anyway. But she gives me this look, which I've learned over the course. It's the same look when I said, hey, baby, what do you think about moving to Arkansas? And, and I recognize that look like, well, what's wrong with where we are? Well, I got to look this well, what's wrong with the Southern Baptists? You know, now she didn't say that, but I can read her mind after these years. So anyway, uh, I talked to her, and I could tell she was a little leery because I've had a lot of cockamamie ideas in my life, and she's learned to kind of weed through them. But anyway, but she was actually encouraging to me, and so we talked, and we talked a long time. And uh, so... This is a process that actually, before we ever came to an Orthodox church, for me, started about a year and a half, actually, before I ever had nerve enough to come to an Orthodox church. But now, I don't know how long, I don't remember exactly how long it was before we started talking and looking into it together. Uh, but, so she said, well, what, we, what should we do? So I said, you know what, let's, let's go on the Ancient Faith website. So we started saying the daily prayers in the morning and the evening, and I didn't say the midday at the time, but we started saying the prayers, and I personally noticed a difference. I mean, it was something happening. I didn't really know how to put it in words, but I could feel something moving. So I said, you know, we talked, and we decided to visit an Orthodox church. So we looked, and... Now, this is odd, but we decided we were going to go to St. John of Chicago because we live in Salem Springs, and it's about the same distance to either one. So one Saturday, I said, well, I tell you what, we won't go tomorrow, but we'll go this Saturday, and we'll find it, and then we'll go next Sunday. We couldn't find it. So we came here instead. <laughs> no disrespect that your second choice just the way it worked out. Uh, anyway... We came here instead, and as, as, as a lot of you know, I was pretty nervous because I didn't know what to expect. And uh, I figured the worst thing that happened was I'd be escorted to the door and told Harry to get out. So anyway, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. So I came, and again, forgive me if this is the wrong thing, but the first Sunday I was here, I was fascinated with Father John and the censor. And that little loopy thing he does. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's all one of the things that stick out to me for my first Sunday. Uh, I probably should have got something else out of the service. But, okay. you, know, you told me just to come and observe. So okay. anyway, uh, honestly, <clears throat> I didn't know whether I'd come back after that first Sunday <clears throat> when I left. Uh, this service was so very different from anything I'd ever experienced. Uh, but you people were all so nice and kind, really. Everybody here, Kate, Tom, 
I could name Liz, Marilyn, Father John, the whole kid in Caboodle, I could name everybody here. Everybody was so kind. And again, that little voice had said, you need to go back. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to think. But the voice just told me to go back. So I did. Uh, Yeah, Wednesday, Saturday. And then, I I mean, it was like I just had a a thirst for what the Orthodox faith was. And and fool that I was, I thought I could learn this in a couple of months. And I could have Orthodoxy down there and know everything. And, you know, I... (laughs) I've come to the realization I could have ten lifetimes and I would not ever get through everything it is to know and, and anyway. So so we started and I said, you know what, let's just give this a few signs and let's just try and see and look. So we did. Well, the Leary one here, the one that didn't sure but said well, she would go to support me, she actually came to it first. Um and like I say, and it may be the fact that she'd been to a liturgical church, like the Catholic Church, then it was, you know, it was more comfortable. But, I mean, she's sitting there at the house crossing herself and, you know, like looking at me, why don't you get with the program, you know. Uh, but she actually came to it first. And, and when we went into it, we decided if one of us or both of us and neither of us want to continue this, that's fine, you know. So, uh, and I was having trouble, and I think part of it, it's not that I disagreed with it necessarily, but the intercession of saints, the Theotokos, I've never had any experience with that at all. And I struggle with it because honestly, some of the places that we've been, they teach us is wrong. So, I struggled with it, and uh, it took a while, but I got, it didn't take a long, long time, but I got there, I finally got it, and, you know, it's, it's like, for me, I would struggle with things, and I'd really have a problem, and then all of a sudden, it would just come to me real clear that this is, this is it. So, uh, And I kind of hesitate to tell this in a way, but I feel like I need to, so I'm going to do it. Uh, but if y'all don't realize I'm a little weird by now, you know, so anyway. But I remember the Sunday when it really hit home with me. I would think we were sitting right where you are, Kate, and uh, right there. And... I was watching when they were taking communion, and I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, 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 it's like somebody opened a curtain or something, and I realized something very divine and sacred was going on. And uh, I just knew this was it. And I mean, I know that. Everybody doesn't get to it at the same point, but when that happened that Sunday, I realized. I remember the whole thing now in my mind. It was uh, Richard and uh, David Rios. And I don't know how to explain it. I can't put it in words. And I guess that's why we call it a mystery. I don't know. But it's just something that I realized that was happening. And uh, frankly, when that happened, that that kind of sealed it for me. I said, you know, this... Yeah. I didn't have to get to the point where I was like, I understand everything about orthodoxy because I never will. And I'm a convert. I'm not a spring chicken, so I know I'll be studying and trying to learn the rest of my life. But I had to get to the point where I said, I can trust this church. This church has given me the truth. I had to get to that point, and I did. So we were chrismated. In fact, tomorrow will be one year for us. Yeah, the eleventh. And uh, I wore my lucky clothes because this is what I was chrismated. 
I think maybe I have a different t-shirt. But, and I did have different shoes off. I've got a notorious amount of hardware in my feet and knees, so I'm a big fan of soft shoes. So, uh, what I'm going to do now, that's how we came to it. And like I say, Terry came to it before I did, which was odd because I was the one that saw it. But the Lord works different. I think the Lord works different. And this is just me. I think he works different on everybody because we're all different. And he comes to us. And I think the whole key to, if you want a closer communion with God, well, I recommend orthodoxy, but the whole key to it is you have to come to him in the right spirit. And I think you have to say, Lord, I'm broken. And you know, you know, and just completely surrender yourself. Uh, and I think if you do that, that you'll be guided to where you need to go. Because in one of our psalms that we read in the morning, and I can't remember exactly which one it is for the numbers, and I'm bad with numbers, but anyway, it says the Lord will not despise a, a, a contrite heart. I mean, you know, he's telling you outright, if you come to me broken, in earnest and look. Uh, so, you know, we've been in it for a year now, and I, and you know, Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. And it, frankly, it's been more wonderful than anything I could have imagined. Uh, again, I probably shouldn't confess this, but I was never much of a prayer. She was. She's always probably been a lot spiritually stronger than me. Uh, I like, personally, I like having the prayers written down that I read. And then, of course, I also do personal prayers. And I get up some mornings. I've got a crazy schedule. Some mornings I get up at 2.30 and some mornings, you know, some mornings I go in at 4.30 in the morning and some mornings it might be nine. And I don't, I'll be frank, I don't always feel like praying when I get up. But, you know, I found over the course <clears throat> of doing it every morning, whether you feel like it or not, by the time I'm finished, I'm glad I did and I feel better. Uh, I say the midday prayer. Again, some days it may be 3 o'clock in the afternoon before I say it, you know, because I get tied up and in my work. I can't just put people on hold and stop. I have to kind of complete tasks as I go. Uh, the Jesus prayer is a wonderful thing. That's been a big help to me, and I'll confess to everybody here. I'm a smoker. I know it's bad. I'm trying to quit. And I've been using the Jesus prayer, and I find that, that a lot of times that gives me some relief. Uh, I've cut way back. Support me on this, babe. Don't make me <laughs> uh, you know, I've, uh, you know, I'll be going, my trouble is going down the road. It's nothing to do, and I've got the radio on, and I just reach for a cigarette. Well, I've gotten where I put a grass cab in my truck, and when I want a cigarette, I'll just say to Jesus, prayer and say, Lord, help me, make, make me last another 15 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. And it's, it seems to be working, and my goal is to be sometime after the first of the year, quit completely. May it be blessed. Yes, may it be, because she has been on me to quit, and I knew I needed to quit. The doctor told me I needed to quit, so I need to quit. It, it prob it's not a good thing for a Christian to do as a regular habit. I know that because we're supposed to take care of our bodies. But uh, I'm getting there. And like I say, the Jesus prayer works wonderful for everything. Uh, again, and I'm making myself, Sam, are you recording this? Yes, sir. You know my mother's going to be watching this, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, she knows all this. Uh, <laughs> I had trouble with using a lot of profanity. I always have. I, was, I just heard it all my life, and it seems like it changed. And I, I, you know, I said, you know, I've got to get out of this habit. This is not a good thing for me to be doing. And you know, the Jesus prayer and just asking the Lord. Now I still slip too much, but Terry's even noticed. She said, you know, I've noticed. You know, your language has gotten a lot cleaner. <laughs> And I mean, and I'm not saying this to impress anybody. I'm just trying to tell you that the prayers 
in Jesus' prayer, you know, don't lose sight of the fact that because we're looking to heaven, that this faith and these things can't help you here on this life. And I'm not talking about paying your bills or anything like that, but, you know, we're having to struggle as we go through this life. At least I do. And it's a lot of practical things in there. I mean, you know, and a lot of it is just discipline. Uh, and I've got to say, and I don't know how she feels and I won't talk to her, but our evening prayer is a time we take as a couple. And we don't always do it together every evening because of schedule. And, and, but I feel like the, the time we've spent praying in the evening together has brought us closer. And we've always been really close. And I would encourage everybody to do that as a family, with the children, everybody. You know, say your evening prayers together. Uh, doesn't have to be a big, huge production. Just, you know, right before bed we say them. And like I say, with my schedule, sometimes I say them at 7 and sometimes it's 9 or 10, you know, depending on what. But uh, that's basically where we are. If anybody's got any questions, I'll give some kind of answer. It may not be right. We'll try it. You're a joy to have in our congregation. Both of you are It's been wonderful. I'm glad that you made it here. You're part of our family. Thank you. Well, God bless you guys. Did you have something to say? I love you. Can I work out? And your kids are coming in too. That's a wonderful yeah. thing. Yes, it is. Brand new here. Yes. Yeah. Or do you have a daughter here for too long? Too? Well, we try. They're a lot of fun to get yes, well acquainted with. Uh, Todd's really a funny guy. You, uh, <laughs> you agree with that? It, it's, it's, I think, a depth with humor being the hammer that uh, brings it in. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Todd and Terry. God bless them. Give them good health. Give them strength. Answer all their prayers. Bless their family. Give them many beautiful grandchildren. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.